Hello, critics and creative types. My name is TB Skyn, and before we get into the video proper today, a couple of pieces of housekeeping. Housekeeping number one. If you have tried to get in touch with me via the YouTube messaging system, don't, don't try to do that, because the YouTube messaging system is terrible. It's ass. It is the worst kind of ass. It is, it is, it is swamp ass on a hot day in Florida. It is bad. Don't use it. It doesn't notify me when I receive new messages. It doesn't notify you necessarily when you receive responses. And there's a pretty decent chance that if I send something or you send something, it never reaches the person it's supposed to get to. It is terrible. It is ass. If you need to get in touch with me, use my Twitter account, which is twitter.com slash tbskyen. TBSkyn, there's a link to that down in the description, or use my email, which you can find in my bio on Twitter. Those are ways to get in touch with me for sure, but if you have tried to use the YouTube messaging system, I've probably seen your message, and I have probably responded to it, but I can't guarantee I've seen your message, and I can't guarantee that my response has gotten to you. So you can check, but no promises. Housekeeping number two. My channel now has a header. I know that might not seem like something that's, that's kind of worth making a point about in the video, but if you visited my channel page before today, uh, what you would have seen up in the header was just a black background with some white text on it. That has been there since I started the YouTube channel. Like, since I made the account and, and put, like, some videos on here, that has been there. And it was originally... I just kind of... I thought, oh, there's a place to put a header, I should put something there, and then I just, black background, white text, who gives a shit, put a thing there, because when I first made this channel, I figured, who cares, it doesn't matter, no one's gonna show up, no one's gonna be, like, it doesn't matter what the channel looks like. Um, but today I looked at the subscriber count, and it's 24,204 at the moment when I'm recording this video, and a thought went through my head. Oh, hey, that's that's almost a quarter of a hundred thousand. And then that thought backed up a little bit, and it pulled out a megaphone, and it was like, Dude, that's almost a quarter of a hundred thousand. And I was looking at my channel page today for whatever reason, and I saw the old header, which was made from a presumption that it doesn't matter, no one gives a shit, why even bother trying, and it all of a sudden seemed incredibly rude to me to, to have that channel header because it's a header that says, like, everything about it, everything about its creation says, I don't give a shit about this channel. I don't care. It doesn't matter because no one's here and it, it's not interesting. It doesn't matter. No one's going to show up. But people... People did show up. 24,000 people... I mean, maybe some of them are bots and, and maybe some of them are dead accounts or whatever, but 24,000 people did show up and all of a sudden it felt really rude and bad to have a channel page that looked so weak and amateurish that, that, that looked like I don't give a shit about you. So today I spent some time making a new channel header is, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and, and yeah. I'm weird and neurotic, and these are the things that go through my head, and that's why I made a header and a nice little matching icon for the channel. Anyway, that's housekeeping done. Let's get into the subject of the video proper, which is this guy. This is Jin, and he's a character in League of Legends. You already know that. The reason I'm bringing him up today is because yesterday I put out my video making my argument for who is the best character design in League of Legends, and my argument is that it's Ramis. I think he is the best character design in League of Legends. That is a subjective opinion. I may not have been good enough at communicating that in the video yesterday, that it's an entirely subjective opinion. It's not like there's a mag magical mathematical formula that tells you exactly how good any given character design is, and Ramis was the best one because of science. It's a subjective opinion. I have some arguments for it, and I stand by it, but if you disagree with me, that's fine. It, I'm not saying that you're stupid or something, or that you're wrong. But in the comments, a lot of people started saying, but what about Jin? 
What about Jin? What about what about this guy? What about what about isn't he the best one? Surely he's the best one. And it wasn't just like a couple of people or like a little cluster of people. It was like dozens and dozens and like even right before I recorded this video, I saw like four or five new ones of people asking me, what about Jin? And that piqued my interest. So I went, okay, sure, let's take a look at Jin. Let, let's take a look at him and figure out why I don't think he's the best character design in League of Legends. And something weird happened. I look at Jin and I go, oh yeah, that's a good character design. Psychotic, you know, theatrical art-obsessed murderer who kills people in elaborate performances. That's what that looks like. That's a, that, yeah, that's a good character design. That's well executed. Uh, yeah, bravo. <laughs> Woo. <sighs> nice weather we're having today, right? I, I'm going somewhere nice on holiday. That was kind of what happened, is that I got to the point where I was like, yes, that's good, it works, it's it's a good execution, and then I couldn't get any further. Now yesterday, one of the reasons I really like Ramus's character design is because it prompts me to think a lot about his character design. Because it is this ridiculous, self-referential meta-joke about itself that was really interesting to me, it really tickled me. But Jin, I look at him and I don't think any further about it. Like, there's nothing compelling me to consider him on a deeper level. And that's weird to me. If you followed this channel for a while, you know that I can talk at extreme length about pretty much anything. That's either a blessing or a curse, depending on whether you're me, who likes talking a lot, or you're literally anybody else who might prefer that I shut up sometimes. But with Jin, I kept getting stuck. I kept running into things where I was like, oh, hey, here, here's a thing. Here's a thing that might be interesting to talk about. And then going, but actually, on the other hand, maybe, hmm. So, insofar as I can make an interesting video about Jin, I'm going to give it a shot anyway. It's going to have to be about that. It's going to be, have to be about why I don't have that many opinions about Jin. That's how far I'm having to reach to make this video is I have to make a an opinion video about why I don't have a lot of opinions. <laughs> That's the level we're at. So, Jin, the virtuoso. Riot have been very clear that their process when they're deciding a champion is to start from the gameplay. The gameplay always comes first. So with Jin, what they wanted to express was the sniper. That is the foundation of who Jin is. That's that's the place from which all other parts of him evolved is Riot's game designers wanted to create a sniper champion. And so they did. And then they go to their artists and their designers once they have some gameplay concept in place and say, come up with some lore and some writing and a character design that fits this. So that's where Jin starts as the sniper. And the thing that the Riot designers came up with, to, the, the artists came up with to fit that was, well, what you see in front of you right now. And that makes perfect sense because you can't just create a sniper champion who just shoots one time and then that's it. That's not really good gameplay. You have to give them, like, they have to have stuff to do in the meantime. So Riot's gameplay designers came up with the idea, okay, so he has four shots. And the fifth, the, the fourth one is the super powerful one, but you kind of need to also land the first one. So you have something to do all the time about keeping track of your shots and stuff. And then the artists and the writers look at that and go, okay, so what we have here is actually a performance of sorts. We have a, a thing with, with this this step-by-step lead-in leading to a great finale, a great crescendo. Okay, that's a performance. That's that's an art piece. That's that's theater, almost. What would fit with that? Well, he's a theater performer, but he murders people with a gun. Okay, psychotic killer who's obsessed with killing people in artistic ways. Boom. Perfectly makes sense. It's, it's a perfectly good concept for a character design. And what they came up with fits that really well. And I say that with frustration, because that kind of deprives me of things to talk about with Jin. Now, one of the other features of Jin's character that is kind of important and integral to who he is, is the number four, right? Uh, he has a lot of four ratios in his uh, kit. He's got like a lot of 
abilities that do things four times. He has four shots, he has four pieces of ammunition in his basic attack, he has four pieces of ammunition in his ultimate, his grenade bounces four times, he has a lot of 44% things going on with his damage numbers. Four is really important to him, and it's present in his lore as well. Here's his short story, um, where there's this section. He wiped the gun's stock a fourth time. He couldn't be sure it was clean until he wiped it down four times. Didn't matter he hadn't used it. Didn't matter that he was only going to stow it under the in the bag under the bed. He couldn't put it away until he was sure it was clean. And he couldn't be sure it was clean until he had wiped it down four times. It was getting clean, though. Four times makes it clean. So that is very much a part of his character, that he has this relentless obsessive compulsion to incorporate the number four into his life and into his art and into his work. And yeah, that, that makes sense. He has got four bullets in his, in his uh, sniper gun and it's kind of, it's well reflected. And that kind of led me to, oh, okay. So that's actually a point of criticism because if you look at the Lotus trap he's got, it's got five petals on the flower instead of four. So that, that doesn't fit, but that's also really fucking weak. <laughs> like that's, oh, is that the best, is that the biggest point of criticism? Because it's also, it's a lotus flower. It's not, it's not, that's not really, the thing that's the art about Jin is the shot. So yeah, that's a little nitpick, but it's not really a, a thing. And then I look at his character design and go, okay, but hey, if he's this, this, this creative, this perfectionist, type who wants to create this perfect beautiful piece of art then why is he so lopsided hmm? why does he have this big lump on one side of his character model and makes him look completely unstable and then i go oh wait all right because he's unstable because he isn't a, a good artist he's a, he's a murderer he's a psychopath he's a lunatic he's unstable literally in his character design as well as in his character concept he is unbalanced and it's the same thing with the cloak the cloak hangs askew on him instead of being this perfect symmetrical shape it hangs askew which messes up the shape of his torso it makes him look a little bit weird and uneven this really comes across by the way in his uh, splash art you can see how this arm kind of looks like it's bigger way thicker and bigger than that arm and his torso kind of looks like where is it in relationship to the legs his whole form is kind of weird and distorted because that cape is obscuring everything that's underneath him and again that might be a point of criticism except it makes sense it makes perfect sense. Yes, I can nitpick at it and say, well, doesn't that create a conflict between the concept of a psychotic killer and the concept of, of a perfect performing artist and a sniper? Sure, kinda, but it's also kind of pretty well resolved <clears throat> by the way that they've implemented this unbalanced aspect to his character design. So, and then I think about the number four and I go, ah, oh, ah, but, but see, he still has all his five fingers on each hand, and if he's obsessed with the number four, shouldn't he only have four fingers? And then I look at his, you know, human hand, and I see, oh, but actually he he has four fingers exposed, and the fifth finger is covered in a glove, and that's his trigger finger. So there's actually a numerical symmetry there between the number four and how he performs his art, so that they have thought about that. That is in there. And then I look at his character model with the cloak off and I go, ah, there's only two straps across his chest. So that's only two instead of four. But then I go, oh, but they cross over each other. So it kind of looks like there's four lines meeting in the center. And he's also wearing a, a belt that's two lengths of rope stro strung across his, across his midriff. So that's only two, but two plus two is four. So maybe that's a four. And again, like I kept looking for things that were worth examining from a critical perspective and there just aren't any and it's not because Jin is perfect I, I really don't think he is like I said I can nitpick a bunch of stuff but none of it is imperfect enough to be worth commenting on and that's kind of remarkable now there is one thing I would like to bring up that where I, I actually have something more substantive to say. If you remember my video about Soraka's lore, one of the major criticisms I have of Soraka's lore is that from the very beginning of the character, she was tied 
to Warwick, like completely tied at the hip to him. They are the reason why each other exist. Warwick's betrayal is the reason why Soraka became, you know, lost her divinity and had to enter the League of Legends to fight to get it back. And Soraka's curse is the reason why Warwick was an, a werewolf in the first place. So they were the reason for each other's existence. And that created a problem where any major change to one of them requires major change to the other because otherwise they don't work. So when Warwick gets reworked, all of Soraka's lore completely disintegrates because it was so reliant on that keystone of Warwick being there in order to work at all. And Jin is a much better execution of that. That's one of the places where, where Jin is actually a really good example of doing it right because Jin, Sed, and Shen have a substantial lore connection. They are, in a sense, the reason why each other exist, right? Jin starts out his criminal career as a murderer who kills people a lot. Eventually, people notice that people are being murdered a whole bunch, and they decide that should probably stop. So they call in the great Master Kusho, who is the master of Shen and Sed. And what the story says, or implies, is that the horror of Jin's crimes, like just the awful, awful things he does, is what creates the rift between Shen and Sed. That Sed uh, comes onto his path of becoming this shadow ninja assassin master because of what he sees Jin do to innocent people. And Shen becomes this almost unfeeling zealot, completely obsessed with balance because he sees what happens when someone profoundly unbalanced is allowed to be powerful, right? And they both exist as a reaction to Jin. And Jin, for his part, is captured by Shen and Sed and their master and thrown into prison where he is given by, like, where some Ionian Illuminati types give him the opportunity to become an assassin for Ionia. They give him the gun that becomes the foundation of his character going forward. So they're all the reason for each other's existence. But you can cut away all the Jin stuff from Sed's story, and Sed still works. Like, it still makes sense. Okay, he's he's a evil ninja as opposed to the good ninja who is Shen. And the same thing goes for Shen. You can cut the Jin stuff out, and Shen still works on his own. And the same thing goes for Jin. He doesn't need Sed and Shen to be part of his story in order for his story to work. It is all... It's very closely tied together. There's a lot of interesting lore that you could explore there, but you don't have to. It's not It's not absolutely necessary for his character to work at all. They're tied together by rope, but they're not tied at the hip. So that's a good example of doing that particular concept right. Now, if only Riot would actually release some Jin lore or some stuff with Jin and Shin and Set in them or actually explore that relationship or do anything about them at all, that would be nice. Anyway, my name is Pintibi Sky, and thank you very much for watching this slightly unusual, unorthodox video. If you have any comments, you should feel free to leave them down below. Uh, there's a like button, there's a dislike button. Those are options if they reflect how you feel. You can subscribe if you are so inclined and get me to that that quarter of a hundred thousand. That still kind of boggles my mind that that is even a thing that might happen in the future. Uh... And if you don't want to do any of those things, that's completely fine as well. There's going to be links in the description to Jin, to his character page, to his uh, bio, his short stories, where you can read them for yourself. You should. They're good. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.